here's a relatively simple question. This is about two people who are playing a game, Angelica and Basil. I'll just call them A and B here. They are playing a game and this game involves a certain set of ordered pairs. And these are the ordered pairs. There are four of these as you see. An ordered pair is where the order is fixed. So 1, 3 if it's written, it's not the same as just having 3, 1. It really means the first number is 1 and the second number is 3. Now, what is each ordered pair signifying? That's what we read further. In each of these four ordered pairs, the first number is Angelica's preference number for that pair. That means if I look at 1, 3, then the first number, which is 1, this is Angelica's preference number for this particular pair. Similarly, if I want to find Angelica's preference number in this third pair, then again, it's going to be the first number, which is 3, so on. Then it tells you also that the second number is Basil's preference number for that pair. So again, in, in the first pair, if I see again the 1, 3, then 3 is the preference number for Basil in this particular pair, and so on. Now then, four pairs, four preference numbers for each person, and that's what we have here. Now read further, it talks about how the game begins now. Angelica takes the first turn, and what does she do in that turn? She removes an ordered pair. Which ordered pair? We'll find out further. But in this first turn, this is what Angelica did. Then Basil comes, takes the second turn, and then again removes an ordered pair from among the remaining three. So you started with four, Angelica removed one, then from the remaining ones, means from the remaining three, Basil also removed one. They continue taking turns until all pairs have been removed. This is when the game is over. Now, obviously, because it is just four pairs here, I know it's going to be just four turns. It's going to be A, B, then again A, and then again B. This is how the four turns are going to look. Now, after they're done and this game is over, what happens is the final score is computed and they're telling you exactly how that happens. Final score of any player is equal to sum of that player's preference numbers for the ordered pairs he or she has removed. So final score of any player is equal to the sum of that player's preference numbers only and preference numbers from where? Anyway, in all of these ordered pairs, both of them have a preference number, but we're not taking all of the preference numbers. We are just taking the sum of those from the ordered pairs that this particular person removed. So if I take a random example, suppose A removed 1, 3 and 2, 1. I'm just randomly writing the first two. Then what are the preference numbers for A? I know the first number is A's preference number. So that's going to be 1 from here and 2 from here. When you take the sum, 3 becomes the final score for A. This is when A picked up 1, 3 in the first turn and 2, 1 in the second turn. This way. Same thing you'll do for B. So this is just how the score is determined. But at this point, I don't know how the ordered pairs are being picked, which ones will be picked and so on. So we'll simply read further and see what else we find. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So, here is your question. Now, this is where they give you more information about how the picking happens. Each player always selects the available ordered pair for which his or her preference number is greatest. This now gives you all the information you needed to decide which pair will be picked up. Now, after all of this is done, this picking up is done, the game is over, final score will be computed. The question wants you to select Angelica's final score here in the first column and Basil's final score here in the second column based on all the given information. So I'll simply bring in the things that we had earlier and we'll combine it with this new information about how the picking is done. Let's see. Perfect. Just look, here are the four ordered pairs. This is how we're reading any ordered pair. A, Angelica's preference number, then comes Basil's. These are the way the turns are going, A, B, A, B. Now combine it with how the picking is done. So let's just start playing the game. So Angelica will start. Angelica will pick up the pair where 
her preference number is the greatest and her preference number is always the first number. Look at all of the first numbers. Which is the greatest one? It is this 4. Which means I'm sure that Angelica is going to pick up 4, 4 as the first ordered pair. Then this one is out and comes Basil's turn. Basil will pick up wherever the second number is the greatest because that's what Basil's preference number is. So if you see 3, 1 and 2, the greatest among these is 3. So I am sure about Basil's first pick as well. This is 1,3. Then again, you come back here. Let me actually make small crosses to show which ones have been used up. Now you have these two. Again, think about A's preference numbers, the first ones. The greater one is 3 here. That means A's next pick is 3,2 and then Basil doesn't have a choice. It is 2,1. Once the picking is done, there's nothing left. You just have to find the score, which is simply going to be the sum of all the preference numbers. Look very carefully. If I'm looking at A, the first numbers are your preference numbers. So this is 4 plus 3 for A. That means a total score of 7. And so I'm ready to mark the answer for the first column. Let's just do this here. Similarly, now if I think about Basil, you know it's the second numbers. So you take the 3 and 1 and then your 3 plus 1 gives you 4. Let's see where that is. You're done. Very simple. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Let's summarize this nicely. So first, you began by understanding the entire game. You visualize all of the information. You wrote down all of the turns here, in fact. There was not much scope for note taking here, but there was a lot that we understood how this entire game is being played. Because initially here in the question text, it told us nothing about how these ordered pairs were being removed. We could not really understand anything about this final sum, how to get the sum, because at that point, there were just so many combinations for which two A could pick and which two pairs B could pick. The moment we went to the question, we found more information about how this picking is done. And so here it was just about combining all of the information together. We simply looked at the four pairs and kept writing which pair made more sense according to this one condition and then finally just adding the numbers we were done. What you required here was focus because it is possible that when you're looking at so many numbers, so many ordered pairs, you can by mistake read the second number for Angelica, the first number for Basil or maybe take the first number sometimes and the second number another time just because of so many numbers. So if you're completely immersed in your question, you're completely just there, you're present, you will not make a mistake.